Good morning, everyone. I am delighted to attend the session and the subsequent evaluation of the Rafale aircraft by Finnish officials. I am Brigadier General Gael Diaz de Tueta from the French Direction Générale de l'Armement, our Defense Procurement Agency. I coordinate the French government-to-government -government potential cooperation program related to HX. The file comes from a straightforward idea. A country such as France, with a fleet of a few hundred fighter planes, could no longer afford to have too many different types of aircraft. There is obviously an efficiency reason linked to economies of scale. There is also an operational reason. Modern warfare is more global than it was in the past, and air forces need aircraft and pilots capable of executing all types of mission during one single mission. This is why France decided to replace seven different aircraft by Rafale. So from the very beginning, we, the French government, told industry that we wanted them to design a plane natively capable of all the missions, from recce to air to air, from airborne deterrence to air to ground, and from <coughs> anti-ship to air to air refueling between two Rafale. To make things harder, the Defense Procurement Agency also requested one single aircraft to be able to operate from land and from the Porte Avion Charles de Gaulle, which is not the largest aircraft carrier in the world. We demanded that industry use state-of-the-art armament, optical and radar sensors, electronic warfare suits, and we natively embedded in Rafale the concepts of data fusion, connectivity, and interoperability. While we were at it, we requested industry to implement innovative maintenance concepts. For example, the modular architecture of the engine allows to change a single module, say the high pressure compressor, and go back flying without any bench test. This is not widespread in military engines and has many operational and availability benefits. Those ideas represent a fantastic industrial and design challenge. To be fully on the roll, you need to think of all potential design choices in advance. It is the only way to avoid bad, bad surprises when you want to introduce a new functionality. And we all know that true challenges enhance motivation. The Finnish football team proved it by qualifying to Euro 2020. In the Rafale domain, industry also took up the challenge and they have delivered. As a procurement specialist, I hereby confirm that they have delivered in time, budget, and performance. <coughs> Another feature of Rafale is its modular architecture. It provides fle flexibility to adapt to future Air Force requirements whilst avoiding heavy hardware retrofits. Every few years, we introduce what we call a new standard. In the last decade, F3 standard, was, for instance, the opportunity to introduce the airborne deterrent and an active electronically scanned array radar, or ASA radar, giving Rafale exceptional air-to-air -air capabilities. F3R is the current standard in France. F3R contract was awarded to industry in 2013, with a qualification date set at the time for the end of 2018. Qualification was reached a bit ahead of schedule in October 2018, confirming what I said earlier about the ability of industry to deliver on time, performance, and budget. A four standard has just been launched and is destined to increase connectivity, increase electronic warfare, and prepare Rafale to be a key asset in FCAS and GWS. As you know, future combat air system next generation weapon system is currently a trilateral future combat air system with Germany and Spain, which leadership is endorsed by France. Our budgetary, our budgetary and operational plans are based on Rafale being a central asset in combat air until FCAS and GWS is sufficiently deployed and matured. This will lead us well into the 2060s. After that horizon, Rafale and the future combat air system next generation weapon system will complement each other. Such a plan is fully manageable for the country the size of France. To be fair, 
it is also probably the maximum, and I do not think we would be in a position to sustain more than two fleets in parallel. In complement to the political message delivered to our ambassador a few minutes ago, my last slide is a perfect illustration of why there are uniforms around the table today. There is indeed a high aspiration in the French Ministry of Defense to cooperate with your country, to cooperate with Finland. First, we will support Finland through an ambitious defense cooperation in order to support the acquisition of the capability. The French government, the French Ministry of Defense know the system. We know the industrial network involved and we will transfer know-how and expertise in this field. The investments we have made over the years will also benefit Finland through training and access to our testing facilities. Second, the French administration will not impose performance restrictions on the reform that is delivered to Finland. And third, we are counting on Finland to help us make progress. By staff exchange, by sharing of feedback, by fully cooperating on testing, on future requirements, on new technologies, we anticipate a genuine added value on the use of Rafal and the definition and implementation of the next standards of Rafal. This open and hands-on approach will definitely allow Finland to implement its security of supply concept. I can assure, that I can assure you this because we understand your concepts. The French requirements for sovereignty, for freedom of action, are indeed very similar to yours, both nationally and in the framework of the discussions on the European instruments such as PESCO or the European Defence Fund. The decision on the HX programme will obviously be a Finnish-only decision, but I can reiterate our satisfaction on the Rafale programme by saying that if we were to go back in time, France would choose Rafale again. I am sure this well-deserved compliment will not put too much pressure on the next speakers. I thank you all for your attention.